6, 2020, the City Council adopted these procedures for using communications media technology as provided by Section 120.54, Paragraph 5B2, Florida Statutes. Members of the public wanting to participate in the meeting were asked in the posted meeting notice to submit their questions or comments on agenda items with their name and address and a reference to the agenda item on which they wish to comment by email to the city clerk at cityclerks at gulfbreezeflorida.com or by regular mail to the city clerk's attention at the city of Gulf Breeze City Hall, 1070 Shoreline Drive, Gulf Breeze, Florida 32561. All written comments for this meeting were to be received by 4 p.m. Central Standard Time today, September 14th, 2020. Anyone who wants to comment on an agenda item during the meeting or anyone who wants to participate in the public hearing on the budget and truth and millage rate um, or in the public forum at the end of the meeting can call in to the following toll-free number 1-888-585-9008, call code 186-319955. Uh, hold and after calling in and your call will be answered in turn. Comments on agenda items and for the public hearing and in the public forum may also be made via the chat box on YouTube Live. The standard rules also apply with comments being limited to three minutes and they must be applicable to the agenda topic being considered. 
Uh, members of the public were also directed on the city website and in the notice for this meeting to instructions on how to attend the meeting and participate through electronic media by following the instructions at the following link, www.cityofgulfbreezefl.us or https um, colon slash slash cityofgulfbreeze.us slash the budget slash. So if you haven't gotten that, you can go to our website, you can see the links and you can click on there. You'll have the dial-in number and um, the link to the YouTube uh, stream. Pursuant to section 286.0105 Florida statutes, if any person decides to appeal any decision made by the council with respect to any matter being considered tonight in the public um, meeting or hearing, he or she will need a, verb, a record of the proceedings and that, and for that purpose, they need to ensure that it's a verbatim record, um, which would include any comments, testimony, evidence upon which um, their appeal might be based. Uh, this record is not provided by the City of Gulf Breeze, but the proceedings are recorded and you may request a copy of the recording from the City Clerk. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. At this time, I uh, will ask for approval of the minutes from the August 3rd City Council Budget Workshop. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have anyone from the public that has um, spoken to this? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes 5 0. At this time, we are going to have a public hearing. The Gulf Free City Council will now convene the public hearing portion of our agenda for the City of Gulf Free's fiscal year 2021 proposed tentative millage and tentative budget as required by Florida statutes chapters 129 and 200 and as advertised in the trim notices. This is resolution number 47-2020 and it is to approve the tentative millage rate for the tax year 2020. And city manager Samantha Abel. Thank you, Mayor and Council. At your meeting on September 17th with final adoption, uh, we will have a budget and be a uh, brief PowerPoint presentation as we do annually. And so tonight being the uh, tentative approval, I'm just going to recap uh, the uh, efforts of your workshops uh, through the memorandum uh, in front of you. And um, so this is tentative millage. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so uh, based on the city council workshops, the city's proposed millage rate will generate approximately $98,536 uh, projected at 100% or $93,609 projected at 95% of receipt, which is what we are required uh, to budget. Uh, the revenue receipts of uh, $1,723,617 is contemplated and the city's fiscal year 2021 proposed budget, which includes the CRA's portion of a little less than $3,000, I'm sorry, $300,000. Um, in response to the tentative millage determination, staff has prepared what we call the trim report for the property appraiser uh, of the rate by the July 31st, 2020 deadline. Attached to your agenda, in addition to the resolution, is the uh, comparable millage rates um, if we were to, um, you know, to roll back the rate, uh, approving the tentative millage at 1.9723 this evening uh, ensures the same millage rate as last year. Happy to answer any questions. Leslie, right. have we had any questions or comments from the public regarding this? Um, we will begin the public hearing. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We did get an email today. Um, Um, he had requested um, a, that the city provide a breakdown of the non avalorum taxes as well as um, the capital trust bond agency income uh, for 2020 and 2021. But he also asked um, the 2020 budget was amended a few times over 40 million. 2021's budget is about 15% lower. Will there be a 15% property tax cut? Um, the city 
city voted to double the electricity sales from 3% to 6%. What is the 2020 revenue from this tax and the 2021 revenue? Um, I'm assuming these are both for the, the budget and for the Avalon um, public hearing. So I did want to read this email into the record. Okay. Um, I do know that the finance director did provide Mr. Doyle the information that he requested, but um, I did want to read his stuff out. All right. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, so we've got the public hearing open, and then we will close the public hearing if there have been no other contracts. And then I'll just double check in one more time. Okay. To make sure we don't have any calls waiting. No, ma'am, we do not have any uh, public comments. Okay. So all right, this is for the motion um, for resolution 47-2020, and that's to set the tentative millage rate for the city of Gulf Breeze at 1.9723 mills for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2020, and ending September 30th, 21st. So we have a motion. Second. Have, okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 And, um, all opposed, same sign, passes 5-0. All right, the tentative millage rate for the city of Gulf Breeze is 1.9723 mills for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2020 and ending September 30th, 2021, which is equal to the rolled back rate of 2.2991 mills. The millage is subject to a second and final public hearing that will be held at a, as a virtual and special meeting on Thursday, September 17th at 5.30. All right, and so um, at this time we'll go to resolution 48, 2020, which is approving a tentative budget for the fiscal year 2021, and I'll open that for a public hearing. Um, other than Mr. Doyle's email that I read into the record, I have not received any public comments prior to the meeting, and there is no calls or comments um, on the YouTube live chat or on the, uh, the teleconference lines. Okay, thank you. All right, this time I'll defer to uh, Samantha. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I got a little ahead of myself on that last one, so just <laughs> want to reiterate that uh, we will have the annual budget and brief for you at your next meeting. Uh, but just going to recap briefly uh, the uh, City Council's six budget work sessions, uh, which were held to review the tentative budget uh, in front of you for, uh, for adoption this evening and then final adoption on the 17th. Uh, Resolution 48-2020 contains a budget summary uh, for fiscal year 2021. The overall comprehensive budget, including all funds, is approximately $4,144,430 below the previous year's budget or an approximate 10.8% decrease and is primarily related to the reduction in capital project spending um, at uh, close to $4 million or $3,932,100. Uh, the general fund is about 2.5 million below the prior year spending or approximately 21.4 percent and so to the citizens request at the last meeting the uh, city's revenue is not higher than the expenses you are required by law to adopt a balanced budget uh, every year and so beginning three years ago uh, that mayor and council took money out of savings what we call cash reserve and brought that money forward in order to achieve capital projects which have now concluded. And so what this budget represents is that the mayor and council is taking less money out of savings because those most livable city capital projects have completed. In fact, what you see by this budget is a maintenance level budget in anticipation of the continuation of a pandemic. And so there are employee furloughs in this budget and there's also the deferment of capital uh, projects and nearly all funds. And we'll talk about some of those in a little bit, but as it relates to the Tourism Development Fund, the Community Redevelopment Fund, and certainly your utilities, we are deferring capital needs in anticipation of, uh, of just the need to reassess what our revenues will be because there is the uncertainty right now in the economic climate. 
And so we uh, would call this a maintenance uh, level budget. But again, the reason why you're seeing less spending is because uh, in 2017, that mayor and council took money out of savings in order to achieve capital projects, which have now primarily completed. And so with that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, each one of these major funds as it relates to salaries and benefits. Uh, of course, the one thing that you can count on almost every year is a salary increase due to the uh, increase in insurance costs most often. But yet we don't see that for fiscal year 2021. Uh, in fact, you see that across all funds, total wages and fringe benefits are slated to decrease um, negligibly, but it's by approximately $13,189. That's significant because we were able to keep our insurance claims low and we were able to continue to cost share. Uh, we did an, a lot of analysis with the mayor and council during our budget workshops about looking at cost savings um, through contracted services or bringing those uh, costs in house. And so when you have like temporary employees where you're paying an employment agency, uh, that cost when we did the analysis uh, in, in some scenarios was a little bit higher. And so we were able to bring that cost down across all funds. Then in the general fund, you see the most significant reduction and that is $219,125. And that of course is primarily due to the furloughs and parks and recreation. Um, because of the pandemic. And so as conditions change, the mayor and council may see a recommendation to change your schedule of authorized positions and refund those, um, those uh, refund is kind of an odd word to use, but you, you will see a request to fund those positions perhaps later in the fiscal year. Professional uh, and contract services, you do see an increase of 9.9% uh, there, and that is uh, significantly in your special fund, in your community redevelopment area fund, and so that isn't paid for out of your direct millage or any other type of user fee, but that increase, just want to point out, is uh, shouldered 80% by county revenue, being that it is within the CRA. That's to continue one of your resiliency objectives, which is uh, undergrounding and uh, utilities, and then also to continue uh, your transportation uh, special studies, including the multimodal overpass design. And so that's why you see an increase there. Um, operations and repair are slated to increase 11.4%, directly attributed to the uh, almost threefold uh, increase in funding for resurfacing and paving. So the mayor and council have aggressively funded, uh, funded uh, paving in this fiscal year 2021 schedule. Supplies and expenses are negligible. Again, the increase is uh, 3%. Uh, the debt service uh, is only slated to increase less than 1%. This is attributed to the payoff of a loan uh, from 2016 and the SSRU. That less than 1% uh, increase is related to new debt with the Stormwater uh, East District Basin. And so uh, moving on, we discuss transfers um, between funds that relates primarily to the general funds uh, portion of Stormwater. Uh, improvements and of course that helps keep uh, stormwater rates low citywide as we continue to aggressively achieve our stormwater master plan projects from 2014. Uh, utility rate adjustments, uh, this budget does include a 3% um, uh, rate increase or adjustment which was recommended by Raftelis consultants at the conclusion of a year-long uh, utility study that is both inside and outside the city uh, it is uh, primarily for inflation purposes, but that is for all of your utility enterprise funds. The Tiger Point Golf Course uh, Fund, of course, uh, you recall it has a, it anticipates that there may be a subsidy required of about 260000 uh, for next year if we continue to own it for the full 12 months, but as we know, it is for sale, and so that is a projection. Uh, natural gas is budgeted at a maintenance level with an overall decrease of about 214000 Solid waste fund uh, spending is about a 3% increase over prior year. Uh, that again tracks with uh, inflation uh, costs. Tourism development tax fund, which again we'll talk about more uh, in a moment, but it is a maintenance level budget that is uh, budgeted at 15.6% below the prior year. And that is because, of course, we're not sure how the pandemic is going to impact tourism. 
uh, same with traffic citation and red light fund uh, as you know we're not certain what traffic will look like next year you do see a reduction there of about four hundred and five thousand uh, dollars that budget is important to look at because of course that is how we fund our patrol car vehicle replacement program which also includes uh, laptops uh, and then finally you have your street and stormwater fund which I've talked about um, prior but just want to point out that that fund uh, for your streets uh, the revenue sources are your local option fuel tax and your half cent sales tax that was established for the first time for fiscal year 2021 as a new fund um, for transparency and so it'll be easier for our residents to track because we're making sure to dedicate local option fuel and the half cent sales tax directly into that fund um, rather than do transfers through the year. And so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right. Um, let's see, Leslie, do we have any uh, comments from the public? And then we might not receive them. All right, so the tentative budget for the city of Gulf Breeze at fiscal year 2021 is $34,083,759, which is approximately $4,144,430 budget or an approximate 10.8 percent decrease and is primarily related to the reduction in capital project spending at 3.9 3 million nine hundred thirty two thousand one hundred okay um and so we have no comments from the public so do we have in a, have a motion okay Check. all right we have a motion and a second any discussion all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes 5 0. So the tentative budget for the city of Gulf Breeze for the fiscal year 2021 is $34,083,000. $34,830,000. And $759,000. I'm not saying that right. You got it, dollars. Okay, <laughs> dollars. Uh, with a tentative millage uh, rate of 1.9723 mills, which is equal to the rollback rate of 2.2991 mills. The tentative budget is subject to a second and final public hearing, and that will be a virtual special meeting held on Thursday, September 17th, 2020 at 5.30. Okay, so now, we will suspend the city council meeting and convene as the community redevelopment board of directors. But first, I think we might have an updated weather report. Um, just to check okay. real quick with our city clerk, because this was advertised at 5:30, do we need to do the CRA hearing first and then yes. do the weather report? We should. Okay. okay. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Little... Okay. So at this time, um, we. We'll go on to the Community Development Board of Directors special meeting agenda, and that was uh, scheduled for tonight at 5.30. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this, Leslie? I have no name. I've not received any comments. All right. Um, and so for the meeting, minutes of August 17th, 2020, uh, do we have a motion? Motion, please. Okay. Second. And we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. All right, then we have got action item, which is resolution 49-2020, adopting the UCR slash CRA budget for fiscal year 2021. And Samantha, if you will walk us through that one. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, you convened as the Community Redevelopment Agency in order to uh, provide direction on the budget for fiscal year 2021 I bring your attention to page 8 that just illustrates one of my prior comments related to the city's contribution and the county's <coughs> contribution into this fund if the community redevelopment agency uh, did not exist then the county contribution would be apportioned elsewhere throughout the county and so for those uh, property owners within the CRA special district they pay the same taxes that they would outside that district however the uh, county millage portion and the city's millage portion uh, that increases every year since the year it was first established 
is uh, directed back into this fund. It is through an interlocal agreement between the city and the county, and those funds are used to eliminate bro uh, blight and address uh, public safety and beautification. And so for fiscal year 2021, we are projecting a county contribution of $860,444 and a city contribution of $291,526. And then we also are bringing uh, reserves forward from that are unspent funds uh, of $614,361. And just a reminder that CRA funds by law must be spent down within three years. So this is a fund that uh, you can encumber it, but you must show that you're that it is identified for project spending and spend that down within three years. Total revenue uh, is uh, close to $1.8 million. Expenses um, for next year relate to uh, undergrounding utility design. In order for the mayor and council to have a proper grasp of what undergrounding utilities within our commercial corridor would cost, you need to, of course, take that next step uh, we uh, staff anticipate bringing to you a recommendation to engage a consultant who will work with individual property owners uh, in the CRA and so that we can establish if we can work within the FDOT right of way or if an easement is needed and that will help you better identify areas of um, priority and how and for you to develop uh, ultimately a funding plan as a later step. In addition to the underground and utility design there is the multimodal overpass uh, design, contractual services for maintenance, uh, and also a facade grant program. Then there's continued uh, maintenance costs related to our safe streets program. 50% uh, of the cost of your CRA and neighborhood services coordinator. And then of course your improvements related to multimobility on the Fair Point to Shoreline path. Uh, lastly, for many, many years, the CRA of course has contributed for uh, safety and policing within the commercial corridor. And so you see the uh, support for the police department is $376,395 for next year. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay. Leslie, did we receive any other comments from the explanation? I know I'm sure about it. All right, council, do we have a motion and a second? Move to approval. <clears throat> second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion from council? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Do we have any discussion items for CRA? New business? Public forum we have. And adjourn the CRA section of our meeting tonight. All right, at this time, uh, we will reconvene the city council meeting with our weather report, our updated weather <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, we just attended a uh, webinar with the National Weather Service office out of uh, Mobile, Alabama. Um, and um, it appears that if um, Sally keeps on its current track, uh, it'll make landfall about 1 a.m. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, right now, it's forecast to make landfall in uh, Gaucher. Uh, I mean, it goes right over the top of Gaucher. Uh, but I'm sure as you guys have been aware and, and watching in the news, the track keeps shifting a little further east, a little further east, and a little further east. Um, they advised us in this meeting um, that additional shifts are possible. Um, so it could track closer to us, um, more towards Mobile Bay. Um, and it's not out of the question. Um, they indicated in the webinar that Pensacola um, is not out of the question for receiving a portion of the hurricane and the hurricane force winds. Um, they have uh, continued to push uh, all along that uh, locally uh, 25 inches of rain uh, is possible um, from the event. Um, it will come ashore as a strong category two. Um, a cap three is, is not uh, out of the question, but understand uh, the difference between a, a low cap three and a strong cap two, they say is, is you know, I don't want to say insignificant, but th there's not much difference between the two. Um, we have a 93% um, um, chance, chance that um, we'll receive sustained tropical storm force winds um, here in the city, and, and that's 39 to 57 miles an hour. 
uh, a 44 percent um, chance that we'll get strong tropical storm force winds. So that would be uh, 58 to hurricane force, which I think is 74, 79 miles an hour. Um, we are expected uh, to start getting the worst of it uh, tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday, well, you're actually starting to see some of the bands move through, but um, you'll, you'll start getting the worst of it tonight uh, into Tuesday uh, and all the way up into to Wednesday evening. So in the storm surge is predicted at uh, two to four feet. So that's uh, basically it in a nutshell. And those come in about how often So um, they, they give themselves, we do a webinar twice a day, um, one at 11 and then one at 530. Uh, and they do it uh, uh, because the hurricane center's uh, information comes in uh, at 10 and then at, at four. So they need a little time to assimilate uh, that information and they do it within an hour, hour and a half of, of getting that information. And then the other times they send out a briefing packet, which uh, I send to Samantha and the, the police chief. Uh, so tonight at, at 10 30 or 11, uh, the next advisory from the Hurricane Center comes out at 10. They'll send a packet out about 11 o'clock tonight. So I'll be up to 11 to send that out to them. Okay. Um, Can we get a copy of an email of that? Yeah. I time? send it to you, you every time. To, every okay. time. Okay. Cool. That's good information, Shane. Thanks. Yeah, it is. That's good. My, my son helps me. <laughs> he, uh, this morning we were uh, in the briefing uh, and he texted me four minutes before the, the guy on the telephone told me that it uh, had obtained uh, hurricane status. So he knew wow. four minutes before they did. <laughs> oh my God, that's interesting. So. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The uh, budget for next fiscal year is uh, reduced from a uh, prior year of 260000 uh, to $219,400. Of course, that is a conservative budget based on uh, just a, a, uh, some uncertainty related to the tourism industry. Uh, that means that uh, the Tourism uh, Development Advisory uh, Council is deferring its kind of keynote uh, comprehensive wayfinding way sign uh, program and so you'll see that that is not funded for next year. Uh, Chamber of Commerce Tourism Support is funded. Uh, Spring Fest is funded because that is much later in the year. Uh, of course we'll make a call towards that. Otherwise it is operations and uh, repairs uh, budget and then also a small contribution which is a share with uh, with GBSA for the electronic sign for Shoreline Drive. All right, thank you. Leslie, do we have anyone in the public who'd like to speak to this? Hi, Mimi, I've not received any uh, comments. All right. Uh, Council, do we have a motion and a second? Move to approve. Second. Okay. We do have a motion and a second. Any discussion? One quick question. If further adjustments are necessary, you can do so. If Bring it back to council again. Yes. If necessary. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Passes five zero. Next, we go down to resolution number fifty one dash twenty twenty, and that's approving the schedule of authorized positions for fiscal year twenty twenty one. Samantha. Thank you. Mayor and Council, during your budget work sessions, you heard a presentation from each department director and they uh, recommended to you any changes uh, in staffing during that time. And you also had discussions about uh, levels of service as it relates to each fund. The uh, schedule that is in front of you this evening reflects those uh, changes. And um, this is for, of course, you know, budget transparency. The council 
uh, last year approved a new compensation report uh, from Cody and Associates, which approved a pay range uh, and the pay grade for each one of these um, positions. Uh, you will see the furloughs that we discussed uh, earlier due to the um, pandemic. And of course, if there is any revision to this schedule, such as the creation of a position or the elimination of a position, that does require council action. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Our new Assistant uh, City Manager, Sheila Fitzgerald, uh, joined us and uh, jumped right in. And so we had our uh, annual review of the Capital Improvement Plan completed by each department. She reviewed that uh, which with each of them. We're always looking for ways to uh, just improve this and fine tune it. We've heard your message in the past, which is you don't want a lot of paragraphs of reading. You want things to be reader friendly for your citizens. And so I do hope every year you're seeing some improvements uh, in that regard. We try to make it graphically uh, attractive, but there are no surprises and there is no new information in this capital improvement plan. You are adopting it now because it is consistent with your budget actions. And so the reason for your capital improvement plan is it's a long range um, planning document for you so that our mayor and council uh, can share with your citizens what is on the horizon but also it helps us leverage our local dollars when we uh, are seeking grant opportunities and so this is also a tool that we often share with uh, various inter-jurisdictional agencies as well and uh, I know that you've had time to review it I'm happy to answer any individual questions uh, that you have but staff would recommend approval. Thank you. Uh, the city of Pensacola has likewise uh, approved a, um, a declaration stating an emergency and also Santa Rosa County has amended their existing declaration uh, to also include uh, the impending uh, hurricane. We just heard a weather report uh, from Shane Carmichael. I can just share with you that we had uh, an extensive uh, preparation brief this morning. Uh, as you well know, through your uh, updates, we uh, really got underway yesterday with making sure to stage necessary equipment and bypass pumps across the city. Um, as I shared you know, with our employees, you, we can work our whole career and never work with somebody who has responded to a 500 year flood event. And we are uniquely positioned in that we work for a city where most of our peers have responded to a 500 year flood event and even more within our own city. And so we are aware where the vulnerabilities are. We already know what it is to collaborate across departments, but also across organizations. We have been in close contact with our Interfaith Disaster Resources uh, Council, of which Mayor Pro Tem uh, Tom Nail is our city representative. They are at the ready. They have individually expressed to the city uh, their readiness and so because uh, the mayor and council have made such significant investments since 2014, uh, we were able to develop a hot spots map for our citizens uh, to show them the areas that are known to be vulnerable, but also areas that have improved in the last uh, six years 
to better prepare us for a 100-year flood event. That is not to say that we are not going to have affected properties. Uh, we, we very much expect that that is going to happen. Um, as you know from our weather reports, in some areas uh, we may experience upwards of a 500-year flood event once again, uh, meaning that we could well experience more than 20 inches of rain. That is what we are preparing for. Uh, we have activated the EOC, which means that uh, our essential em you know, employees will be returning tomorrow. I will be here just as uh, in you know, 2017 with um, Storm Nate and again last year with uh, Hurricane Michael. Uh, I will be uh, receiving those um, citizen concerns and relaying those both to you and to uh, proper departments. We have a, a county uh, representative to the county's EOC, and so likewise, any need for mutual aid, uh, aid will be coordinated, um, and we're uh, as ready as you can be for a situation like this, but we do uh, consider ourselves to be better informed and better prepared than in 2014. And um, so we'll, we'll keep you advised, and I know Mayor Fitch uh, also plans to be here throughout the duration in the EOC. What's zone A? Zone A would be the shoreline area, so that would be Deer Point and Sandview Trail. Mm -hmm. Those kind of areas. Yes. All right, any other questions for Sam? Leslie, any from the public? No, ma'am. All right. Um, we will take a motion and a second. Second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, moved by Tom and seconded by J.B. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Council, this is in keeping with our uh, financial best practices. Uh, the bad debt relates to fiscal year 2018. Um, the uncollectible debt at that time was $60,000. Of that amount, approximately $19,000 or 31.7% uh, has been collected by utility billing staff in accordance with uh, established guidelines. Uh, the breakdown across funds uh, is follows, but the city staff recommend that council approve uh, the write-off of utility account balances in the amount uh, totaling $15,200.66. All right. Leslie, any uh, comments or questions from the public? I know. All right. Do we have a motion? Do for approval. All right. And a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just one question. Okay. I was going to, 14 out of the 17 are a uh, statute of limitations. I mean, they've been on the book for some time, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I that's, guess there was no correct. So they ran out of resources. To, we really wouldn't have any. Nothing to go after. Um, for that time to go after them it would be barred. So. Mm -hmm. But this is um, in accordance with our debt uh, write-off policy that we was adopted um, over the last year. Uh, so. So the finance can clean the books up and, and you know get. So it basically it stays there until it until the statute of limitation runs it. Um, under the new policy, not necessarily. No. I think there are other conditions on which they the finance can bring it to. So once this is clear that it's, it's a clean slate at that point. Yes. Yes. Going forward till next year, we look at it again. And we'll look at it again. Yes. And this is something that was recommended by the state auditors and by our accountants and. Um, our finance department, so it's, it's a good step in terms of the management. Okay, thank you. Do we have anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And it passes by zero. Uh, next, we'll go down to the custodial services contract extension. Samantha. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, staff recommends uh, a, approval of this extension to the contract in order to provide uh, more time for a cost analysis and more discussion uh, with the Mayor and Council. The city has been pleased with the service that has been provided to GCE for a number of years uh, with no increase. Um, 
however, the uh, the increase for next year does represent a 10%, and for that reason, obviously, it would warrant us uh, going out to bid and then also looking at perhaps if there is a cost savings of even bringing those services in-house. And so um, before we make you a recommendation, we just need a little bit more time, and uh, GCE um, has been very receptive to that, and so thankfully they're allowing us just a short-term extension. Uh, that means that there would be an increase just for the first quarter of fiscal year 2021. The city would pay uh, approximately $2,330 in addition to what uh, is currently budgeted. And uh, again, we would appreciate approval of this item. Move to approve. All right, and a second. Second. All right, we have a motion to second. Any discussion from the council? I need to recuse myself. GCE is a, an affiliate of Baptist. Baptist. Okay, all right. So, did you get that lesson? Yes. Okay. All right, and um, so all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. And oppose the same sign, and that's zero, so it passes 4 0. With Councilman Torgerson. All right, so now we'll go to action agenda item C, and that's to purchase an annual subscription to COPO, the National Research Center Community Survey uh, Company, for our recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, I recently sent you a uh, email, just city manager um, brief in this regards, um, but individually, uh, members of the council have expressed to me your desire to uh, solicit, you know, feedback from your residents. Uh, are we are we doing a good job? Uh, are, do our residents feel that we are a responsive city government? Uh, as you know, elected uh, officials, um, you know, are they generally pleased with the direction of policy? Um, but then also helping you to identify um, new priorities. And so what we are recommending is the National Community Survey for a number of reasons, but it provides national benchmarks. So it removes any type of uh, local bias in you know, developing questions uh, or framing responses. Uh, the um, POLCO actually will be the ones to administer the survey um, primarily online. They'll be promoting that you know, very heavily. Um, but then also, once the final report uh, is completed, then that will be uh, reported back to some of those same um, national you know, promotional agencies that also help promote our city as America's most livable city. Uh, and that is a goal that we have set for ourselves, and so I think this is the most appropriate um, way to measure ourselves. And uh, the um, proposed questions, uh, would be sent to the mayor and council. We're uh, working on those now. Again, these are these are national standard questions that are asked of everyone, but there is a place uh, on the last page uh, for questions that would be unique to our city. And so we'll be sharing those with you. And uh, the total cost is $12,700 to be uh, apportioned across all funds, all major funds. So happy to answer any questions. Well, obviously, with a uh, severe weather event on the horizon, we may need to alter the timeline, but the thinking was that we were going to start promoting it with the link in the next two weeks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. If our residents aren't otherwise distracted. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. Okay. Um, Leslie, any comments or questions? we have been working to uh, under the terms of the purchase and sale agreement that the council 
and uh, the school board both approved back um, earlier this year. The, um, as I reported to you, I think in the last or, or meeting prior, in one of the last couple of meetings, um, the school board completed their due diligence in uh, August and um, advised us they're ready to move forward. We have been working since then to clear title exceptions and just confirm and get the title commitment. These are kind of standard things, as you know, there are some um, some old agreements and, and the, the covenants that have to be um, just cleared and released and it's just documenting that for purposes of, of the title company. And we are um, just about complete uh, in, in having done that. They've signed off on everything. Um, we did have to ask for, and, and um, the parties agreed to a short extension, which the mayor signed on your behalf. And uh, the date now for closing will be um, on or before September 22nd. So um, as long as Sally does not derail us <laughs> again and require another short extension, um, we are in the process of getting all the signatures on the various documents we need for the title work. But again, expect to have that done um, this week, uh, rather than um, So what we are asking um, is that the council just um, once again, confirm uh, its declaration of the subject 45 acres as surplus property because it's no longer used for golf play and the affluent disposal capacity for that property will be maintained under the terms of the affluent disposal easement agreement to be executed at closing. We are also recommending that you confirm approval of the sale on the terms set forth in the previously approved purchase and sale agreement. Again, that's just affirming what you've already um, approved and that you authorize the mayor to sign any and all documents necessary to close the sale. And I would just say, um, throw in at the moment that, you know, if we do have to, you know, get another short extension just due to the, the weather event that we're facing, um, that that would include that extension as well. I'm hoping we don't, but again, we don't know what we're facing in the next, um, next few days. So uh, that's the recommendation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, as you well know, the uh, Fairpoint Regional Utility System has been in existence for 20 years, and as such, uh, it is necessary to enter into an agreement for the future. This uh, agreement has been placed on uh, virtually every agenda for at least the last year. Uh, it has been uh, workshop heavily with the utility man managers from each uh, respective utility and uh, it represents uh, an agreement for the conditions, performances, and ongoing operations and maintenance of the system by Holly Navarro Water System that by proximity they have the uh, staff and availability to maintain uh, our potable uh, drinking water system. Uh, from our aquifer in East Milton that then is distributed in the, uh, the South Santa Rosa and Peninsula area. With that, I'll turn it over to our Mayor Pro Tem, who is on the board of Fairpoint Regional Utility for anything that I may have left out. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been in the work for some time, but just the uh, Airport Regional Beach once a month, and sometimes we get hung up on certain things that kind of never clear the agenda. It's good to see this one's fine. Uh, I think you covered it fine. Okay. All right, Leslie, any comments from the public for the Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. This recommendation is that the Council approve Gulf Coast Traffic Engineers bid 
of $14,176.80 for pavement markings required with the resurfacing work for fiscal year 2020 Group B as uh, reflected in the attached illustration. Happy to answer any questions. All right. Any questions from the public? Yeah, me. All right. Do you have a motion? Thank you. The council, uh, I'm sorry, the staff uh, request the council authorize the purchase of the, I hope I get that right, Evaqua, don't quote me, model uh, IS3000 18 mesh stainless steel option with a two inch strainer for $18,065 from the sole source vendor AAG and authorize staff to proceed with installation using the best and lowest quote not to exceed seven thousand dollars and you see that there is an initial um uh cost for installation from a local contractor of less than seven thousand but it does need to be you know properly bid with three quotes and um and so we raise that to seven thousand just out of precaution um but it is uh an essential and so we would ask for approval all right thank you We have one new item to add to the agenda, and it is in front of you. It is uh, this one, approval of disaster-related debris removal contract okay. and um, bid. And actually, I apologize. This isn't for action. This was just to inform you. So it is a, it is a discussion. Uh, we went back and forth on this. but. Uh, suffice to say that the uh, council approved a disaster related debris removal contract um, in uh, May of 2019 and so this is just to advise you that that contract was for one year for the same so we do not need to yeah, extend I, it I, 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 we, we are checking to see the term of what I just looked at, which they just sent us, I apologize for okay. chance to no, tell I'm you it came in while we were meeting. Okay. But I think we are good under this. We're just wanting to let you know, um, I guess if we do need to execute any extension, that that would be um, authorized. We just, uh, we think it's it's all in place and it's good based upon the RP um, that you previously approved their response is the low better. So. We, and, we, and I think where the confusion came in, we were previously under contract with them back in 2014. And a quick review, I think that was the one that had the one year. Uh, okay, so, so we think we're good to go. If okay. not, then the mayor may need to ratify, um, but we'll keep you informed for your next meeting. Okay. All right. Sorry that for confusing good. you with that. Yes. That's fine. Just uh, glad yes. the city attorney reads her emails <laughs> during meetings. I'm happy she's a multitasker. I don't usually do that, no, but I didn't they, want to go through that. Wonderful. that um, they, they worked with us afternoon to get this contract to make sure we have everything that we need for it in terms of their insurance and affidavits and things like that so we'll be ready to roll and um so i did i did review it while you were done okay thank you very business. much new business all right hearing none uh public forum